So the last thing that we're going to do is look at how you might convert an existing script into a script that you can use in Grasshopper, right? In order to do that, we're going to say, look at this uh, simple branching script that, um, that we wrote uh, a while back. Um, some, before there was uh, much functionality with using Python script in Grasshopper, we wanted to look at um, a script that would use branching, uh, sorry, would use recursion to achieve branching, something like this, right? So um, what, what we need to review is um, how exactly the branching uh, logic works, which is going to all be done through vectors. Um, and uh, recursion, right? So vectors are an abstract data type that describe two properties, those being direction and magnitude. So here's a representation of a vector, right? You have a change in x, y, and z as the elements that compose the vector. This is delta x, delta y, delta z. And with those values, you can understand the direction from the base point to the tip as well as the magnitude, which is you know, how long this vector is. Right? And um, we can gather vectors or, or create vectors by two points, and we can also compare vectors right? uh, or manipulate them. Right? I could rotate vector A about vector B. Right? And that uh, vector rotation is how you can start to um, get your branching script to kind of grow from down here and rotate and rotate and rotate, etc., until you get to the outer edge, right? So you're not growing a straight line, but you're branching outward. Okay, so in order to actually uh, structure the script so that it will branch, we're going to use um, a recursive logic, right? So we're to... Um, to execute an action recursively means that you're just going to repeat that process in a self-similar way until the desired goal is reached. So the difference between iteration and recursion is that iteration is a step-by-step -step process. First I make sphere A, then I make sphere B, then I make sphere C. Right? And you can look to the sphere that was created just before you to do something to make it a little bit more smart. Um, but in contrast, a recursive logic says, I'm going to define a kind of rule or um, a, a simple action like branch. So I'm going to uh, kind of skew off a little bit the main axis, and then I'm going to go a certain distance. That little action, right, to branch, is, going, is a little uh, self-similar action that I can call to multiple times, right? And instead of having to say I want to step 10 times in the X and 10 times in the Y like we did before in our loop, if we're using a recursive logic, we can say we want you to grow um, branches until you get to a specific condition, right? Which is slightly different, right? It's not necessarily uh, as kind of top down. So the kind of... Um, the funny line uh, for uh, describing recursion is that to understand recursion, you must first understand recursion. Uh, because exactly where you start um, can be a little bit um, unclear. And so if you're understanding recursion, then you're already understanding recursion, then you're already understanding recursion. Uh, kind of a chicken and the egg thing. All right, so um, to actually look at how we might take a script that exists and turn it into um, a GH Python object, we need to address um, two very, very key things, right? And this has to do with the same process that we went through to make our own GH Python objects from scratch, but we have to be extremely aware of them as we do that um, moving from the Rhino Python script to the GH Python script. And that has to do with coordinating both the inputs and the outputs. And this is going to happen on the object itself as we uh, have defined it in Grasshopper as well as in the script as we're modifying it from the Rhino Python script to the GH Python script. Okay, so um, let's go for it, right? So we're not going to actually script the, the branching, um, we're not going to script the branching logic. We're going to say that we, um, we had done it before or we found someone shared it with us and we were really interested in it. 
Um, but let's take a look at how, how it looks in the Rhino Python um, editor. So I'm going to open the Python editor. And another way to get to it is by typing in edit Python script in the command line. And I'm going to open 1-4 branching. And this is in your, fi your files that uh, we gave you on the download link. And there's a, a lot of comments in here, so it hopefully is a, a little bit easier to read. Um, the only thing that we haven't really done uh, today is to use the random library, which is pretty simple, just to say I want a random integer, um, to work with vectors, which are going to be um, probably the best way to look at the operations you can use for vectors are under the, um, the Rhino Iron Python help which would be, no, point vector, right? So the vector operations and the point vector, the point operations are both under this menu, right? So you can uh, find the cross product, create, compare, etc. cetera. Um, otherwise, the only thing that's really different is that we've created a little, um, little action called draw branch. And that's the thing that's going to get called recursively. All right. So let's say that we um, we wrote this script and we want to convert it into a grasshopper or GH Python object. Um, we need to look at the inputs, right? In the same way that any time we asked or prompted the user to define something um, before, we have to look at how we can convert that into an input for grasshopper. And then at the end, instead of just um, returning uh, the drawn or cre already created lines, right? We have to actually um, include those in the output, right? By giving them back to uh, Grasshopper to work with further. All right, so um, with this over here on the left, let's go to Grasshopper and let's drop in the Python object. <clears throat> And let's start by defining the inputs, right? So here it says get curve from user, right? So the first thing that we're going to have to define is the curve. So let's use the same um, variable names that we have here to define our inputs. So x is going to become s line or starting line. Y is going to become rotation, R-O-T. I'm going to add another input by clicking the plus sign. This is going to be branches. This is how many times you want to branch at each uh, intersection. And then one last uh, input for the levels, which is how many times you're going to grow your branching structure, right? Is it one generation, so it's just a straight line, or is it five generations? So we'll, we'll call that levels. Okay, and while we're here, let's look at the actual inputs here and see the, for the rs.getreal and specify what uh, type hint we should have, right? So S line, if we right click and say type hint, notice how in the Python script that we already have, it says get object. So that's generic, right? That's just any object. Um, we could be more specific, we could keep it as object or we could say, I want it to be a curve, right? Let's see what happens if we just say uh, object. This is generic object, All right? ROT, get real, that's got to be a uh, floating point value or also known as a float, All right? So that's been defined as a float. Branches, that's get integer, so that will be an integer, int. And levels will also be an int. Okay, make sure that one was set right. No, it wasn't. So right-click, type hint, integer. Okay, all right, and let's also go ahead and um, define how we're going to uh, give the inputs to the object, right? S-line, that's a curve. So let's go to params, curve. Drop that in. This is going to be our 
a starting line. So let's group that and say starting line as the name. That will go into S line. The rotation, that's the maximum rotation for branching. Okay, um, let's drop in a slider, and this is going to be in degrees. So let's edit our slider and go from, let's say, 1 to 30. Rotation, as the name, hit OK. S line did not get a type hint. We just left it as generic. object. Everything else, this was a, a float and these two are integers. All right, so there's rotation. We need an integer slider for the number of branches. So I'll edit this. Integers between 1 and let's say 5. This will be number of branches. And then I'll copy that, and this will be the number of levels. Okay, so now we've got all of our inputs. And there, everything is orange still because we haven't given it a starting line. Right? So um, just to recap what this script is actually going to do, right? let's draw a line in Rhino. All right, and if we hit play on the script, select the starting curve, select, select max rotation for branching, number of local branches, number of levels of growth, Okay. I think that there was a bug here. Let's try one more time. Four, three, three. All right, so this is what it's going to do. Um, I'll double check the script and make sure that it gets into the uh, the instructor files for the post webinar file sh file exchange. Um, but for our purposes, let's say that um, this is what's going to happen, right? We're going to grow our structure, our little branching structure. Okay, so um, 